Let A be a square matrix with n rows and n columns. Then the Curly Hamilton theorem tells us that usually a function f of the matrix A can be expanded in powers of A finishing at one less power than the size of the matrix. So starting, that is, with the identity i n and finishing with a to the power n minus 1 with various coefficients that I've labelled alpha 0, alpha 1 and so on. The Curly Hamilton theorem also tells us that we can calculate the alphas by substituting each of the eigenvalues of the matrix A in the equation. We will get a set of simultaneous equations for the alphas that can usually be solved. Of course this gets quite complicated for large n so let's stick with 2 by 2 for the moment. In the case of a 2 by 2 matrix, the formula simplifies significantly to give us f of a as the form alpha 0 times the identity of size 2 plus alpha 1 times the matrix A itself. And we stop there because A is 2 by 2. If you've actually done anything like this in your studies, the chances are that you will have seen maybe functions such as high powers of A, say A to the 27 or A to the 53, some such thing. You might also have gone on to look at exponentials, e to the power A, or perhaps more likely e to the power A with a scalar parameter t multiplying it. You might well have stopped there, but if you've done any more, then perhaps you will have seen also sine of at and cos of at. These are all fairly conventional exercises, but you can have some fun with this topic as well. For example, have you ever considered what it might mean to take a matrix to the power of a matrix? Can we give any meaning to that? Well, the answer is yes. It's a just a function of the matrix, after all, so we should be able to write a to the power a equals alpha 0 i2 plus alpha 1 a. And we should be able to find values for the alpha 0 and the alpha 1. Let's actually do an example. Let's take A to be the matrix 1, negative 1, 2, 4. Now remember we need the eigenvalues. So we have to take the determinant 1 minus lambda, negative 1, 2, 4 minus lambda and set it equal to 0. I'll leave you to fill in the details, but that gives us a quadratic equation lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6 equals 0 with the result that lambda is 2 or 3. Now, the curly Hamilton theorem, remember I mentioned it before, tells us that what we have to do is instead of taking the matrix A in our formula here, we substitute the eigenvalues. First of all, 2. So we get 2 to the power 2 instead of a to the a. And we get alpha 0. And for the identity matrix, we just substitute 1. And for the a, we substitute its eigenvalue. So that's alpha 1 times 2. Then we do the same for the eigenvalue 3. And that gives us a pair of solvable simultaneous equations. Alpha 0 plus 2 alpha 1 is 4. And alpha 0 plus 3 alpha 1 is 27. If we subtract one of those from the other, we get alpha 1 equals 23. And that means that alpha 0 is 4. Subtract two lots of 23. 4 take away 46 is negative 42. So there we have it. 
a to the a must be alpha 0, that's negative 42, times the identity matrix, I2, plus alpha 1, that was 23, times the matrix A again. Matrix A was 1, negative 1, 2, 4. Simplifying that using matrix arithmetic gives the matrix negative 19, negative 23, 46, and 50. So there is our form for A to the A. It is meaningful and you can find it. Incidentally, just out of interest, if you were to calculate the eigenvalues for this new matrix, negative 19, negative 23, 46, 50, you would find that they are precisely 4 and 27, or in other words, 2 squared and 3 cubed, the values we were using earlier. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to check. Another game you might like to play with this would depend on you also having looked at the screencasts on the association between complex numbers and 2 by 2 matrices. When we learn about complex numbers, one property that we sometimes learn about the number j is that if you take j to the power j, you get a real number. In fact, e to the negative pi by 2. That's the principal value. There are other values depending on which arguments you choose for j, of course. Now, if you've watched those screencasts, you'll know that j can also be represented as a 2 by 2 matrix, 0, 1, negative 1, 0. So I put out a challenge to you, and leave it as an exercise, for you to check that 0, 1, negative 1, 0 to the power of 0, 1, negative 1, 0 actually comes out to be e to the minus pi by 2, 0, 0, e to the minus pi by 2. That's a very neat result and it's fun to see it coming out. In working through that you'll need to find the eigenvalues of the matrix 0, 1, negative 1, 0. So I'll leave that for you to check but you can use that 0, 1, negative 1, 0 has eigenvalues equal to plus or minus, no big surprise, j. I'll leave it there. You can play around with these results yourself.